four seventy W. That's all this. I think all of this came from Wit. Got our four x four filter, A seven six zero one zero EA. Shifts on oil assembly, D seven six four two one A. Our overdrive band. Don't know what the number is on that. Our EPC solenoid D76431A, our pump bushing 76034, our bearing that goes on top of the uh, overdrive direct drum uh, D76251H, the one that goes on the back side D76229B, our reverse servo cover A76914. Pump bushing A76064, forward steels, five of them, 76128As, our reverse servo three groove, our Sonex pin, Sonex number 76833E, width number S76903, our KO192 plate. From Wits and A seven six seven four seven GB, and looks like they gave us two of those bearings. Uh, our overhaul kit, or actually our LS kit, kit with clutches. Uh, two things I didn't put on the ticket, but I had here was the reverse bevel spring. It's uh, seventy six nine seventy six from Wit, and then. The uh, snap ring that holds the sprag on top of the reverse drum. This is a deal that Superior came out with. You get like five of them in the kit, and Superior's number is a K010. You notice in your kit you got these clutches that look similar to each other. The smaller in diameter ones are your reverse. There's four of them. These are your forwards. We'll go ahead and start off with the forward drum. inner lip is going to be facing towards you so is the outer lip get some lube on there this is what I use for a lip seal tool. It's a snap-on drawer lock tool. Uh, you can use peeler gauge. You can use these lip wizards that they give you in some of these kits. Or if you happen to have the actual tools, you can use the tools that they have to get these pistons in. But all these go in easy. You don't need to buy the tool to do it. Our return spring, our retainer, our snap ring. We want the short end of the taper facing up towards us. We're going to put that opening in that area right there. We don't want it sitting. We could do that, but we don't want it you know, halfway hanging in, halfway out. We want it fully in this area or around that area. But personally, I would put it like right there. And I just realized that they did not send our center support. But I think I got one here.
Okay. You come up to the bottom of that groove where the snap ring goes and you're going to be pretty close. So we got two snap rings in here that are real close to each other and the larger one goes in the forward drum and it's flat. These sealing rings that are in here, as long as they fit in the back of the stator snug, you don't need to replace them. And if you do need to replace them though, they're pretty easy. You don't even need a sizing tool. I'm going to go ahead and do it just to show you. Go ahead and cut these out. Normally I don't replace these, but if you feel the need to So we take the new rings and we just stretch them out until we can get it over the sealing ring groove. Actually we need to go just a tad bit more. I do these one at a time, put the bottom one in first, make sure it's not rolled, kind of try to mash it in there a little bit, <coughs> to try to help start resizing it, get it pretty much centered up on the shaft. Take your stator and just start to slide it on there and it'll start it'll start resizing it. Just make sure that you keep it centered in the groove. There we go, and we'll let that sit for just a second. Take the new one, the other one, top one. Top one's a little bit easier as you can get to it a little bit easier to help try to mash it in there a little bit. Let that sit there for just a sec. All right, reverse drum. These are lathe cut seals, they're flat cut, square cut. Check ball in here, make sure it's nice and free. Kind of get this start it on there and then you can just knock it in. Our ring that goes underneath our bevel plate, we want the opening of that to be in here. You don't want to put it over here, it can crack it. So put that down in the groove. And we want the really wavy 
snap ring. And just start the snap ring in and just work it around. all the way back into the groove all the way around bottom pressure plate that goes like that there's a three clutch and a four clutch the opening of our stills right here we're going to keep all together smaller of our two snap rings that we have. And you got two bearings that are similar to each other. This one that's got the cutouts in it that goes on the output shaft. This one here goes on the reverse drum. locking clockwise get our superior ring this has got a step to it the step side facing up towards you this is a spiral snap ring and take one of it end of it and uh, start it on there and then just work it around Helps if I put it all the way over it. There we go. Well, I had it. Get back in there. You can get you a punch, a screwdriver, anything that you want to. I'm just going to roll that over in like six or eight spots. It just keeps it up in there. Change our ceiling rings out. I keep these ceiling rings right here and I use these on my RE5s. And uh, they work really nice on that unit, on that support. And they hook together just like so. Just kind of work it around. Don't spread it out too far or they will break. So I just hold it in, push it up and around and it'll hook into there. These are pretty easy. It's the ones on the pump that are a little bit harder. Down in here are two more. These are scarf cut. They do give you solid ones also that you know, they didn't in this kit. And the later kits, they give you solid ones. And uh, you can put either one you want to. I take them, they go together like this. Not like this. I take them and squeeze them together a little bit. 
and just work it on there. Open it just just enough to get it on there because it will resize it. It's kind of hard to do on camera. I'm just going to do the one and I'm going to bring this up here where I can get to it easier. The ones that are solid, they're usually fine. You don't need to replace them. As long as they fit in the back of that drum, snug, you're, you're good to go. That would be most difficult to go in the groove. All right. And there's that bearing that's gonna go on the back. different bearings, different thumb gears, and I didn't notice but this one had come apart. Uh, I think it's okay. It's not pitted. Neither side is pitted so should be okay it does clip back on there it's a little on the loose side I'm gonna go see if I got another one put our bearing on sun shell is gonna go on this bearing it's gonna go with the lip down our hub this bearing is gonna go with this side up and then our intermediate shaft is going to go down inside there. Our low sprag rollers more than likely are going to pop out and stick them back in. As long as they don't just fall out when you just turn it around like that, they're okay. Now the center support I have is for a 4 75 w It's got the extra cutout. This will work fine. Overdrive direct drum. This is our inner seal. Lip's going to go down. Make sure once you get it in that groove it's not rolled. Take your scribe and go up underneath it. Just run it around there. Make sure it's all good. Sure that check ball's free. Our outer seal lip facing towards you. spring gonna fit on the little deals fit sticking up right there our short end of our taper up again and if your snap ring is a little bent out of shape just bend it back a little bit all right our washer with our cutout 
face him down. Get our new bearing. Our hub. Start off with the steel. Alternate our clutches all the way to the top. Now I have had problems when you uh, order a loaded drum from WIT. I don't know where they get these steels and pressure plates from, but clearance is always wrong. It always comes out way too loose. The steels are thinner. So, uh, you might not get the right stuff if you order a loaded drum. And usually I don't have a problem if I order just a drum by itself. But sometimes I need all of that stuff. When the planets blow up, it takes all this stuff out. About right, right at the bottom of our groove, and then we are to our bearing. Just gonna go this end up against the back of the drum. All right, didn't used to get these snap rings in the kit, and then they started putting that snap ring in. And then when you ordered the pin from Sonax it didn't have the clip in it but now they're giving you a clip also so I've been using their clip and it comes with this little shim right here it says if you want a firmer shift to put that shim on there I've never put that on there I have too many people complaining about the shifts as they are you know, they really picky on these F-150s people want it to shift like a damn Cadillac people wonder why trucks cost so damn much nowadays treating it like like a damn limousine truck is supposed to be for working not for luxury and right, just pop a clip on there go ahead and lube up the o-ring Put a little grease on our return spring to help keep it in place when we put it in the case. All right, we got our old groove facing this way. We don't want this bushing to be past this surface right here. We do want it to be down far enough that it's not blocking this hole off. And we're gonna stake our bushing in place. strip adhesive on the seal. And go press this into place. Alright, the outer gear does not matter which way it goes. The inner gear needs to go with this bevel facing forward. Kind of center up your gear. And line up our feed holes with our feed holes at all. They bolt up one direction though, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Five ten millimeter bolts.
lip is facing towards us. Make sure it's not rolled. Facing towards us again. Lube this up really good. And there's a bleed hole right here. It needs to line up in that right there. these little tabs right here once we get this down on there we're going to bend those over so they hold on to that ridge right there Kind of push in on one side, kind of pull up and around and back, and it'll unhook those. It helps to have a little bit of fingernails. Also, you can help get them off of there. They are pretty snug. Try not to break these just in case one of them that you get in the kit is broken, or as you're trying to put one on, it breaks. It does happen. Pump washers are selective. Here's five different ones. This is a number three. Most of them are yellow and are number threes. Gonna hook together like so again. Put our pump o-ring on and I believe we're ready to go into the case. Let me change camera angles. Alright. Make sure all of our valves are free. They make valves for all these if you want to replace them. This one, this one. Um, couple others in there. I don't really find the need to do it unless they're just super worn out. All your problem is mostly related to this valve and this valve right here and this pressure regulator sometimes will get hung up. Um, very rarely ever replace anything in the pressure regulator. A lot of times if the unit's really bad with the blown up planets, this valve here will tend to hang and I'll take that out, clean that all up. This valve right here, no matter how free it seems to be, I always take it out. And I got a tool from Sonex. This one's really free right now. It'd probably be okay, but it makes it a whole lot better you go ahead and pull this valve out of the bore. I've gotten to where I do this on almost every rebuild. 
Uh, Sonic's number is 76948 BST2. And it's just a bore sizing tool. I just lube it up a little bit. It's like some PB Blast or something. Go ahead and put that in there. It's going to fit really, really snug. Just tap it in. And depending on how messed up the bore is as to how tight this is going to be. You saw how free that valve was and it, it still is really snug. Just go until it bottoms out. I got this slide hammer for doing uh, pilot bearings on standards and it comes with this little attachment and it's perfect for this. It's got a bolt threaded into the back of that and then it just slide hammer back out. Usually once is enough. If it's really bad, sometimes twice. And as you see, you see either PB Blast or Error Coil. And uh, put the valve back in the bore, and it's really free now. Put the spring back in, and put the clip back in. Make sure all the springs behind there, and that it's pretty much centered up in the hole. really fine now. And normally I don't take this plate off. The only time I do is if it's got water in the unit. I just took it off so that you can see what's back here. There's nothing. This gasket, I've never seen it blown out. We've got two lineup pins. goes down here, goes right there, shift solenoids. I find that these shift solenoids I'm pretty sure is the problem of why the forward drum is cracking. I replace them on every rebuild and since I've been doing that I very rarely get one come back that the forward drum split on. I think maybe twice. Slot right here is this little filter. Throw that away. You got this little 
deal that came in the valve body it goes in this hole right here. Got eight check balls that go on the valve body. like they did. They give you two different gaskets. You see the hole right there? See it does not have the hole right there? We want the one that has the hole and you have to use this gasket when you put this K0192 plate on there. Now these plates only fit on there one way, but if you want to save time, they go, and notch goes right there, and the short end goes up over here, right there. This little deal they give you in the kit is going to sit right over here. It's going to sit on top of that spring retainer for that accumulator. Um, that's it. The bottom gasket is universal. So, we're ready to stuff in the case. We're going to change that bushing right down in there. The best way I've found to do it is to get a long pry bar, skinny one like this one, and try to find the opening. I think the opening of this bushing is right there. So I'm going to have to lean this back towards me because this camera is going to be right in the way. And I'm going to try to get in right there and see if that's where the opening is. And I use a bushing driver that's larger than what I need. And I got a really long bushing driver handle. And I'm going to drive that down flush. And then on my particular bushing driver set, number 46, is the one that fits inside that bushing. Once I get it flush, I'm going to put this inside and knock it down just barely past flush.
our bearing with our let's see if we can get straight on this that our little cutouts sits down on there our output shaft and this is turning nice and free sometimes when you put that bushing in it's a little tight if it is get your uh, output shaft down in there and you can smack it here a few times with the hammer on the output shaft over here on each side and usually that'll straighten it up and it'll be free Overdrive direct drum with our bearing on the back. Our flat snap ring. I'm gonna sit down on this little ledge that's in the case right there. Our band with our two lugs. I'm gonna sit right there. Our center support. This hole is going to go around that lug right there. Center support. There we go. Got our anti rattle clip, or anti clunk spring, whatever you want to call it. Our snap ring with our curved ends up. They're both going to sit right there and there. Sun gear with our bearing. Sun shell. This bearing. Our hub. With that bearing. Intermediate shaft. Forward and reverse drum. Overdrive band, one of our spots on the band is going to fit on that lug right there. Alright, lube up our overdrive servo. Hole. Put our servo in. And I got this homemade tool. This is a 350 uh, 4L60 low reverse spring uh, compressor. And I just, it was uh, welded on the end here. I ground the weld off, drilled and tapped it to accept the bolt so I can take that on and off. Then I drilled out these two holes here. Um, the short side, uh, quarter inch holes. The short side is 
365 thousandths from here to the edge. The long side is 700. And uh, that allows you to, to bolt this down. You use this as a spring compressor. Get two of your long valve body bolts. The short end goes over here. Long end goes over here. And you just push that in. Hold your band up over onto your servo as you compress it. Get our snap ring. We want the short end of the taper, uh, the tips up towards us. Our pressure plate, you'll see that it says four plate on it. That means it takes four clutches. rattle clip this notched in it's gonna face inside it's gonna fit right in that hole right there put our gasket in with Making sure our holes line up. Gonna line up one of these holes in the case, and so that one is gonna line up in that spot. Or I could use that. I can use any of these holes. Just need to make sure I get the right hole in the right hole. Since this has 10 millimeters on the tail housing also, you gotta be careful we want the shorter bolts are gonna be the pump bolts. Normally the tail housing bolts are 13 millimeters, so it's easy to distinguish them.
All right, make sure we still turn. Lay this down on its side, check my end play. Virtually non-existent, so we're good. Turn spring for our servo. Reverse servo, make sure our band is lined up with the hole. Two, three accumulator. Actually, we should lube that up. Less of a risk of cutting it. And if the spring goes into the one, two accumulator. Two springs on top. Since they gave us a new cap, not all kits come with that, so we'll put the new cap in. Short end of the taper up again. This one here can be a little bit fun to put in, especially with a new, a new cap. This filter here, you can leave that out. If I ever do the valve body after it's already in the vehicle, I always just leave that out. Spring down here. Our retainer. That little piece for the separator plate sits right on top. I'm going to change that out of our lever seal. Get a pair of dikes, pull that pin out. Thirteen sixteenths on our nut. change out our EPC while we're here. You have to pull the linkage out to do it. You want to make sure that this area is the same. The lighter ones have a filter screen that looks like this back here. They are different. The brackets that hold them are different. Lube that up. baby heel bar, pull out my lever seal. Linkage seal, this side is facing in. Lube it up. While I got this out, I'm going to go over to the wire wheel and buzz this rust off of here. If you don't have that, uh, 320 sandpaper will work just fine. 
I have seen these so rusty that uh, when you buzz that off, the neutral switch no longer fits properly and it's really loose and it won't read properly. So be mindful of that. You may, if it's really rusty out there, you may be replacing that thing because your neutral switch won't read properly. All right, put her pin back in. Just down to pan level is fine. You don't need to shove that thing all the way in there. This makes it harder to get out. All right. There's two O-rings on here. So this one's only got one. And you have to pull the valve body off in order to change this out. If you got fluid that's hanging out inside of here, then you need to replace this. Called a pass-through connector. Move that up. This notch sits in right in there. All right, our lineup pins for our valve body are gonna go right in there. Make sure our gasket's on. I'll start that front one, line up my linkage, and just drop it on. The bracket for EPC. Like I said, they uh, they are different, so you need to make sure you got the right bracket for the right solenoid. And that bracket. going to sit right down on those notches right there. Long bolts go in the center, short bolts go on the outside. And I lost a bolt and my linkage bolt goes there. All right, eight millimeters, start in the center. Work your way out. Put our detent on, we're going to put it in neutral. Put our hard wire on. <clears throat> Make sure that this is snapped all the way in, especially on your EPC solenoid. Sometimes it'll feel like it is, and it won't be. If you get an EPC solenoid code, you either didn't get that plugged in properly or the wires where they go from the bell housing up around where the filler two bar right by the head as it goes up around that curve right there your problem's going to be right there even when this epc solenoid's bad it does not throw an epc solenoid code 
So if you're getting an EPC solenoid code, you got a wiring problem. Filter on. This rubber gasket that comes from the factory is reusable. If they don't give you one in the kit, you have to specifically ask for one. They're going to give you this. This is junk. Don't use that. It will leak. Just reuse the rubber one that you had. Unless it's just totally annihilated, it, it's going to work just fine. Ten millimeters on our pan. Showing you how the park mechanism goes in, um, in case it comes out because it's pretty bad about coming out. But I uh, show it in the other video that I did, so if you want to see that, it's in there. Our tail housing gasket. Tail housing. Of course, four by fours don't use a rear seal. It's the rear seal for the two-wheel drive. So our bolts for the tail housing. The long ones go on the bottom. On the 4x4s, on the two-wheel drive, they're all the same, except for these up here. These two up here are normally studs. Every once in a while you'll find one with only one over here and real rarely you'll find them in the middle. If you want to buy the tool, you can. There's a tool that hooks in on these two notches right here and hooks in this notch right here. And when you got it neutral, it'll line all that up. There's also a line right there and a line right there. Now if you can make that out, once you have it in neutral, just line those two lines up. There's different neutral switches for different linkages. Uh, there's different speed sensors for what year model you have. I think in that other video, I think I show all that if I remember correctly. I would show all that here, but I'm in a rush for time. So a new O-ring. Speed sensor bolt. Neutral switch bolts. Just line the two lines up. Eight millimeters. 
and tighten it down. Alright, filler tube boot uh, o-ring. If you had a speedometer, here's the o-ring for that. And there'll be different tooth counts on your output shaft. Uh, that's it for this one.